YouTube, Diggy546. Today I'm going to have a couple of clips of Leonard Williams and tell you guys what I think. Should we rescind the tag? Everybody's been talking about it. So, we'll see today. The film does not lie. That's one thing that you can always look at. And how they show up on tape is, you know, that's what they're doing. Forget all the stats. Forget all the numbers. Let's look at the tape. So, right here, lining up... Uh, in between the left guard and uh, left tackle. Uh, pretty much kind of like a three or four technique. So one thing I've noticed is that teams consistently ran away from Leonard Williams. And they consistently, when Leonard Williams is off the field, they, they basically run right at where Leonard Williams would have been. So let's see right here. The Redskins are, are going to run a, a zone blocking scheme, and this left guard is going to pull over to go get this guy, this linebacker right here. I think that's David Mayo. Uh, the fullback's going to look to go uh, get Julian Love. Uh, let's see what happens here. So right here, just a complete wash. Leonard Williams, as you see right here, is completely double teamed. Um, can't tell who this is right here from this picture but he's doing a good job he's keeping contained he's waiting for the cutback just in case but Leonard Williams is, is double teamed and Adrian Peterson is following Eric Flowers our buddy Eric Flowers and everything is just blocked up perfectly the fullback helps on Marcus Golden our two best run stoppers on the D line are both double teamed and the rest is just Adrian Peterson just making just making money. That's what Adrian Peterson does. So, also, let me run this back because you got a guy who, you know, people want to say he's lazy. People want to say he's not this, he's not that. But look at him. He gets double teamed, and he sees Adrian Peterson pretty much on the other side of the field. He can pretty much just stay there if he wants. You know, he's a D lineman. Just stay there. But... This guy turns around, shows off his athleticism, and runs down the play and eventually gets in on that tackle, which, you know, that's that's hustle that, you know, I think should be applied. So now Leonard Williams against the Eagles. This honestly was the only bad run play I saw at Leonard Williams. And let's see, he's going against, uh, he's lined up at the three tech right here and uh, pretty much is going against uh I cannot think of that left guard's name, but he's going up against Jason Kelsey as well. And lines up, comes off of the ball, and Jason Kelsey pretty much just blows him off the line. Uh, not pretty much off the line, but just gets him enough to the side, and he's just washed out. And his gap wasn't the gap that pretty much got uh, given up, but... He pretty much just got moved that play. And that's pretty much the, the worst run play I found of him. Every single time he's in there on the run, they're usually running away from him or he is, you know, shutting down that run. All right, so let's see what I have next. Uh, this next play is going to be against the Bears. And they're going to get this in. This is Leonard Williams right here, right in front of Alec Ogletree. They're going to get this and hand it off to Tariq Cohen. A little inside zone. And I don't know if you guys realize, look how quickly he shot off the ball and immediately got inside. They ran so many stunts with Leonard Williams, but we'll see. So he's running that stunt. So he gets this guy's inside shoulder and Ogletree gets to the outside and gets pretty much a free lane to the backfield. So he immediately just gets inside so quick that he just shuts down the entire inside zone. And then this play is right here. That pitch goes to Boston Scott. And this is when Leonard Williams isn't in the game. So that's pretty much Leonard Williams in the run game. And I'll throw out some stats for you guys. He got to us. Um, I can't remember the week, but it was against the Cowboys, and he didn't he didn't play all that much for us. And 
that was that one game we gave up 172 yards to Dallas. Um, so he didn't play that much that game. So I, I don't really count that for him. But immediately after, uh, 2.6 yards per carry against the Jets, 2.5 yards per carry uh, for the Bears, 3 yards a carry for the Packers, 3.7 yards per carry for the Eagles, 4.9 for the Dolphins, and he specifically wasn't in for the two biggest runs that kind of blew that out of proportion. 3.1 against Washington and 3.9 against Philly. That put us at 3.4 yards per carry, which uh, would be third in the league. And we were fourth in the league pretty much for the entire year's run defense. Now I'm going to go over a couple of the stunts they ran. They ran, like I said, so many stunts with Leonard Williams. You saw one in the run game that he ended up just penetrating it so quickly that uh, he was the guy that benefited from it. But I see, I've seen this guy get so many other people's sacks. It's ridiculous. Pretty much anybody else besides Marcus Golden that got sacks uh, was pretty much a direct result of Leonard Williams. So let's look at this first play against the Eagles. Lined up right here. And he gets immediate penetration to the outside. And you'll see him kind of stick his hip right uh right on to jason peters and it's like a it's just a really tiny detail that just gets so many people free so you'll see him stick that hip right there and then uh i think lorenzo carter gets inside and just has a free shot at the quarterback and that is pretty much all leonard williams because if you look back at this play he's not he's not he doesn't have any ground on uh, Jason Peters so that that is a sack credited directly to Leonard Williams you look at this play you've got Leonard Williams lining up at inside linebacker and you got Alex Ogle, Alec Ogletree lined up at outside linebacker and just 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 watch a guy this big the way he walks just the way he just like he's moving like a linebacker and he accelerate. He's accelerating like a linebacker. This guy is an athletic freak. So watch him come and just shoot that gap, and just pretty much cause that. Uh, I think that was an incompletion. Pretty much, Jadavion Clowney had three sacks last year, and we want to give up our entire salary cap to get him. Leonard Williams could very well have had a lot more than um, that half sack that he had, but those guys. They're both kings of almost sacks. Leonard Williams is actually lined up all the way, almost in a wide nine. Look how far he is lined up outside of this right tackle. And this is a 300 plus pound man. So watch him come off this edge and bend and go get Sam Darnold. That's a sack pretty much. I mean, Lev Bell is there, but if he's not there, that's a sack. I mean, look at the way this guy bends the corner against the right tackle. That's ridiculous at his weight. This is Leonard Williams' only sack for the year. And let's just break this down real quick. Lined up in that A-gap. He immediately just rips through that double team. It's so, like, this is a play action. And Leonard Williams is, he's wrecking havoc at this point. Because he's already pretty much in this quarterback's lap. And he doesn't even see him. He's, he hasn't even, he hasn't even faked the handoff yet. So, he's not going to, it's ridiculous how quick uh, this running back is. He pretty much has to pick, do I try to block the 300-pound guy or do I try to block the linebacker? So, of course, he goes for the linebacker and doesn't really block anybody. And Leonard Williams gets in on this, on this half sack. But even without the blitz, Leonard Williams pretty much just – he destroyed that entire play action. And this is my criticism over Leonard Williams in the past game because if you want to get paid – you're going to have to beat the double team. So he's doubled, and that's all well, but 
you're going to have to beat that double team if you want to get paid like he's about to get paid. And he's entirely too high right here. And he pretty much just gets manhandled by these two guys. He's, he's, he's not getting through. So that's a criticism of his. I think he's a really, really dominant player. But I've seen way too many times of him going against this double team and just getting high and just being completely out of the play. I mean, he's got long arms. He's pretty tall. So pretty tough to, to not get high. So when I talk about how I want Leonard Williams to be able to knife through that double team, it's kind of similar to what I showed you already. Uh, that play that he got his only sack. But this is pretty much the gold standard. This is the best of the best in the league. Chris Jones for Kansas City. You'll see Aaron Donald do this. I mean, better than anybody. But I thought this is a pretty good example of what I want to see from Leonard Williams because Leonard Williams is more athletic than Chris Jones. He's not Aaron Donald, but he's more athletic than Chris Jones, and he needs to be more active with his hands, and he needs to keep his hands. He need, they need to be live because too many times I see him get high, and too many times I see him not fight with his hands to beat that double team. So you'll see how these guys are getting 10 sacks. Uh, Aaron Donald got 20 sacks in the interior of the line. So let's see this. comes off the ball and immediately rips and look how he's still on balance even though he's slanted and then immediately just bounces off the second guy and it's pretty much a double rip move and he's able to do this because he's using his hands and he's using his hips and he's using his feet so you see him, it's almost like a Euro step to where he's stepping inside and then he's taking that second step and he's taking this foot, sticking it around this guy and he's in the quarterback's face. So that's pretty much how you want to knife through. And that's something that Leonard Williams is definitely athletically capable of. So what do I think of the guy? Leonard Williams is very, 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 very underrated by Giants fans and definitely underrated by Jets fans. This guy is a monster inside. He can line up outside. He can line up at linebacker. He can get pressure. He needs an edge rusher on his team. He needs one other person that can command any kind of attention on his team and he'd be so much, his stats would show up so much better. This guy, he's, they're scheming for him to eat up double teams to get other people with pressures. He's literally manufacturing sacks for other people. Leonard Williams, like I said, is extremely underrated. After watching this guy's tape, he is, he's a very, very, very good interior D lineman. I won't call him elite because he doesn't consistently beat the double teams in the pass game, but he does consistently beat it in the run game. He's elite against the run, and he's very, very good against the pass. So if you can get this guy some kind of consistent edge rusher to where he's not consistently getting double teamed and they're not consistently you know, running plays and bootlegs away from him, you'll see this guy's stats shoot up. And like I said, if your only criticism of him is he only has a half a sack, well, Jadavian Clowney coming off the edge only had three sacks, and you're ready to give this guy $20 million. So that's just something to think about. Do I think he's worth $16 million? No. Give the guy $13 million. They're negotiating now. If he gets $13 million, I will be happy. I still wish that we would have just signed him in free agency. I think we would have gotten around $13, $14 million. But who knows? He's on the team, and I think he should stay there for now. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Diggy546, I'm out.